Today I will be discussing my project, the effects of EGFR mutations in tumors on the outcomes of an obstacle effect. Before I begin, I would like to thank my mentors, Dr. Kerba and Dr. Abedin from the Tom Baker Cancer Center here in Calgary for helping me throughout the course of this project. First, uh, I participated in a research internship at the Tom Baker Cancer Center throughout the second half of 2019. Uh, there, I was assisting in data collection for a project of uni a University of Calgary student, and in return, I was given access to this data set in order to perform my own study. While I was doing this data collection, and while I was doing the background for this data collection, I kept seeing the same word pop up repeatedly, EGFR. So I decided to look into it, and what I learned was that EGFR was this mutation that can occur in tumors uh, that causes the unchecked cell reproduction that characterizes this disease. And I was just fascinated by something seemingly so small could cause such a devastating impact on the human body itself, as well as the outcomes for cancer treatments. So I began to look into this further. I was looking at it through the lens of lung cancer, as lung cancer is the, cause, the leading cause of cancer-related death worldwide, uh, through immunotherapy, as immunotherapy is the forefront of cancer research today, especially immune checkpoint inhibitors, uh, which are basically uh, certain inhibitors that block receptors on the tumor cell, which allow the immune cell to recognize the tumor cell as something foreign, rather than as a, as a part of the human body. Uh, lastly, I, I was looking through it, uh, at it through the influence of the abscopal effect, which is essentially the, uh, the ability of the body uh, to allow for localized treatment to cause system-wide results. All of these factors combined to produce uh, my, proje uh, my project, uh, in which I looked at EGFR mutations in non-small cell lung cancer and how this influenced the results of the abscopal effect. So my hypothesis states that if a non-small cell lung cancer patient has the EGFR mutation in their tumor, then they will be less likely to have the abscopal effect occur. And this is due to for a variety of reasons that have been shown in literature in the past. For statistics, 239 patients from the Cross Cancer Institute in Edmonton and the Tom ba Baker Cancer Center, uh, their data was collected uh, in, a, in the retrospective cohort study of the University of Calgary student and then uh, given to me in order to analyze uh, statistically through SPSS. Of these 239 patients, 13 were EGFR positive, but unfortunately this large difference in uh, EGFR groups uh, was uncontrollable by myself due to how I gained access to this data set. Through SPSS, I analyzed the differences in overall survival, progression-free survival, and the occurrence rates of various metastases types uh, between these two EGFR groups, and determined whether or not these differences were statistically significant. This was all for the goal of determining whether or not the abscopal effect had occurred, as this is not something that can be determined by a single number. For my results, as you can see here, uh, the overall survival, uh, the average overall, overall survival of the EGFR positive group was around, on average, 79 months less than the EGFR negative group. You can also see it in this graph here. There was no difference shown between the progression-free survival of the two groups, uh, and any difference that you can see was not shown to be statistically significant. Uh, as for metastases, uh, bone and brain metastases occurred more frequently in the EGFR group, by 28% and 42% respectively. As for liver metastases, this was also shown to occur more frequently in the EGFR positive group, by 24%. However, it was not quite there with regards to statistical significance, as, so this would be something that would be important to look into in a future study. As for other metastases, uh, there was no statistically significant difference shown between the two groups. In all, all these results uh, show that uh, my hypothesis was supported, in that EGFR positive patients were shown to be less likely to have the abscopal effect occur. And this is due to a variety of reasons stemming from the unique tumor microenvironment and tumor mutational burden of EGFR positive tumors. In the future, a uh, better data set would be uh, incredibly useful in order to determine the true difference between EGFR positive and EGFR negative patients, as the difference, the extreme difference between the EGFR positive and EGFR negative groups in this study caused a lot of noise that you could see on the graphs as well as may, as influ uh, may have influenced the results. Additionally, further formal statistical analysis of the confounding variables would be incredibly important in order to determine uh, the true significance of the difference between the EGFR positive and EGFR negative groups. And this is due to the fact that the human body is insanely interconnected. And uh, as such, uh, looking into how factors such as age or cancer stage would be incredibly important. Uh, additionally, uh, a clinical study rather than a retrospective analysis 
would be very useful uh, as it would allow me to better control certain variables in the study, as well as to record more information that may not necessarily be recorded in an average cancer patient's treatment. Lastly, uh, looking more into bone metastases would be uh, something that I'd be very interested in looking f uh, in the future, as uh, there have been no previous studies attempting to correlate EGFR status with bone metastases. 